So, Will, how'd you get in the... Oh, gosh. Uh, I lost the bet. Oh, wait, really? Yeah, like, I never wanted to get in the... I was, um... What kind of bet is this? <laughs> you have to I get was, in the uh, porn. So, I've got an identic memory. So, I've got, like, a 90, 95% retention rate. So, I would, I would could read a book and almost know everything about it. Oh, my God. So, I need uh, you to follow me around and just write shit down. That would be great. <laughs> he doesn't have to. Yeah, or just, or just memorize Remember. it. Remember. Yeah. So I was, uh, I was working a career, I was a uh, project manager at the college at UCSD. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got told I looked like Ryan Reynolds a lot at the time. Mm. So I did a film festival and started making more money doing side acting gigs. So I ended up on a military TV show and I was in the Marine Corps. And so almost the whole cast and production, everybody were all vets. And you're on set for like 12 to 16 hours and there's nothing to do. We're in a base built in the middle of the desert. And so Let's I started, do porn. No, no. So I started. <laughs> All the guys. No, no, no. So yeah, I started pranking. Steps. <laughs> All the I started guys pranking everybody. Oh, okay. Because I was really bored. So I was like, and it just, we started started a prank war on set. And sometimes we'd uh, rec record them and post them on social media and it'd do well for the show. And sometimes uh, we'd just do them just to be an asshole. So it's like MASH. Didn't they have like a bunch of tunnels and like pranks type stuff going on in that? I have no idea. Or no, Hogan's Heroes. Okay. This oh, is, no. these, are show, these are shows from like the 50s that for some reason I know about. The but, 50s? Sorry. Uh, like really old TV shows. Sorry. But anyhow, so I was, I was on there and there was a guest star on for a couple of episodes. And so she wanted to shoot a scene. I said, no, it's going to mess with my acting career. And so we made a bet and I was just being a smart ass because I was supposed to fly to a resort and shoot a commercial for him and then fly back and play Captain America at Comic-Con. And I was like, well... If those both cancel, I got nothing else going on, and production had to book around it. So I was like, sure. So kind of like, literally, I remember like intentionally thinking about it and just like throwing it out to the universe like that. And then the next day at 9 a.m., my agent calls me. He's like, hey, I got some bad news. I got both jobs canceled. I was like, shut the f So then I went and shot a content scene. And then she's like, oh, you're really good. Let's go get you an agent. I'm like, okay. So I go do that. And then I go to do my first scene. And when you're on a mainstream set, you shoot the same scene like 20, 30, 40 times, just over and over and over again, so much that your words just start getting mixed up. So I go to my first shoot, and it was a really small crew, and I, he's like, all right, now I'll do the lines. So I don't act the lines, I just regurgitate the lines. And then he's like, oh, you're really good. Because <laughs> the standard <laughs> acting is so low. And I was like, I was like, <laughs> so it kind of caught me off guard when he said that. And he's like, oh, so we kept going through the, 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 the script and, he, and then just regurgitate the lines. Like, usually you don't act on the first one. You wait till about take three because they're getting their blocking, the lighting before you actually really deliver a performance. Uh -huh. You don't want to really get into it until you get your close up if it's like an emotional thing. And so he, go, go, he keeps going through it and it's like, oh, you're a natural. You're one hit wonder. And I was like, right, this dude's just blowing smoke up my ass. And then the light bulb clicked in my head and I was like, well, oh, this is a prank. This, this is the guys getting back at me. Like, uh, the pranks we were throwing on set, they were, I mean, we were pranking the entire cast and the entire crew, even the producers. Some of the vesters, when they come in, there, there's like nobody was off limits. Like, we're all military vets. So there's literally no line we wouldn't cross or couldn't cross. Yeah. So I get onto this. I thought this might be a prank just because the way that they're shooting this. And so we get. While you're. We haven't even got through the fucking oh, part. Oh, okay. Mm. So, like, we're getting down to where it's like, all right, well. It, you know, if this was my prank and I was running it, I would come out and be like, ha ha, I got you, bitch. You know, like when my mm -hmm. dick comes out. So in my head, I was like, all right, well, I got to get in the mood. So I got my like hand in my pocket. I'm like fluffing myself. And when we get to the point where we're starting, I'm like, all right, they're going to come down from this point or they're going to come through these doors. So I'm just kind of like looking. She's undoing the belt. She whips it out. I'm like looking around and then she puts it in her mouth and I kind of stop for a second. And you can see me like in the video, I even kind of like shift. I was like, this is a but I was already hard. So I was like shot the whole thing right through <laughs> and then it just kind of ended up snowballing and then i won awards every year i've been in since and so it just kind of and, and did that kind of like end your mainstream acting dreams or you just like i'm just going full throttle with this i kind of just go where the wind blows you know it's like just kind of go with the flow like that led me through the marine corps led me through professional martial arts uh i did a bunch of stuff in the marine corps that just affected the entire marine corps um, did a bunch of really interesting things. I just kind of went with the flow. So that's all I was doing here was just kind of. How long have you been doing porn for? A little over six years. I feel like everybody gets into porn. Most people. Yeah. Did you get into it accidentally too? Well, I started dating a girl and then she started doing private Snapchat and then OnlyFans <laughs> and then started to Who's get that? bigger and bigger. Lena. Who's that girl? Well, yeah, <laughs> it just kept getting like she became like a bigger deal. All of a sudden she's tapped in with all. 
We're going to pretend like that, that didn't happen. I saw that. No, nobody saw that. I mean, Lena was one of those girls who said that she was going to get on private snap and just like show booty pics. Yeah, me too. And then she was sucking my dick on there like a few <laughs> days later. Yeah. I'm the same. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I love her so much. <laughs> so, how it goes. Well, okay. Do you feel fulfilled by This is a question for both of you. Do you feel fulfilled by it? Because it can be fun, feels good, it pays well, but like a, as a person who does two things where I like have these long in-depth conversations with people and then I also do the I would say that the difference is that the just feels like even if it's more fun and it's easier, it's like there's less meaning. Yeah. Oh, not fulfilled, not even remotely close. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> not even going to bullshit you. It's just not yeah. even close. I, I'm the same. I'm, it's not what I want to end up doing, you know? Mm. It's kind of like you, you would want to do something else in parallel with. Like if I could make as much money doing something else as easily, like with the things I have, I would. You know what I mean? I mean, you got to think outside the box. Like, there's a thousand people retire every single day right now. Six to eight percent of them own businesses. Um, their kids aren't taking over those businesses right now. So, if you'd actually acquire those businesses, modernize them, put proper marketing behind them, and do that, you could actually just turn around and flip companies every two years. In fact, was that like your hobby or something? No, that was one of the world's youngest billionaires. That's what he did. Really? Like, I got an identical memory. When I like learn stuff, I can't forget it. So, what do I do? I scope out downtown glendale and like just find the old shopkeeper who owns a uh like i wouldn't a, actually mess with california because the cal the laws in california are kind of a pain in the ass to do anything with uh -huh. but i actually look kind of almost anywhere else except for california but hmm. i mean that's just one avenue and then you also have the emerging tech of um ai yeah and ai's all those different applications like i know a guy who's using multiple ai's and then using an AI to get them all to communicate together to streamline processes. Oh, hmm. Jesus Christ. And so I was talking to him, trying to in depth, trying to understand like what he was going for with that. And he says, I'll have my job for about another three to four years before even my job's automated. 